everybody joining me on the breakdown today is an artist who you may not personally know but i'm sure that you've seen his work around if you listen to bands such as hate breed soul fly venom prison testament and most recently halloween eleron cantor joining me on the breakdown today sir how are you doing today i'm doing fine how are you john Doing great. It's uh, morning time over here, evening time for you. Glad that we could uh, hook up and chat um, because yeah. he heavy metal is amazing and heavy metal artwork is amazing too. So uh, this is very Indeed. exciting for me. Indeed, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I never had the chance to check out uh, the NotFest website. Uh, this is like a new platform, right? So the NotFest website is been, new. Yeah, it's the Twitch is relatively new. The NotFest, like obviously, like Slipknot doing their tours and stuff like that, has been around for it. And the like the media part of NotFest has been around for a few years as well. Uh, but the Twitch part of it, right. and, like the live streaming, has uh, I think we start we launched in mid May, so we're still only four or five months old at this point. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to kick things off by what I think is uh, a relatively uh, a question with a relatively uh, seemingly obvious answer, but one that once you get into it kind of has a little bit of nuance. Um, and that is like, right. wh why does heavy metal and the ridiculous album art with it go so well together? Like it's something that metal fans of all stripes are always talking about. Like everybody has their favorite album art, something that pulled them in. Why is it such a, uh, like a great marriage? I think uh, it has to do with the fact that the heavy metal music in general tends to be quite dramatic. Mm. I mean, uh, whether if it's, uh, you know, uh, more autobiographical, like more, um, like, let's say, hardcore or more emotionally based lyrics and such, or could it be like more of the more fancy type of uh, subgenres you have in metal, like power metal and black metal and whatever, it lends itself to visual imagery as opposed to, let's say, uh, improvisational jazz, which I mean, makes sense just to put the photo of the guitar player on the cover because it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't bring up as my many visuals as uh, more fantasy or more poetic style, st I mean, styles of music such as uh, the heavy metal subgenres. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. I also think that there's like, because I was thinking a bit about this in my research, looking at different, like your work, different artists work. Um, it reminds me of like that first, uh, just like, you know, your fantasy novels, your sci-fi novels or something like that, right? Where the cover is the little bit, that little tease to get your mind into the platform of what you're going to be reading, right? And then you can kind yeah. of grab what that's going in there and use that as a reference as you go through. Um, because I think that there are a lot, I mean, we were just talking about uh, on my stream last night, uh, Cradle of Filth released a new song. They have a new album coming out, right? They weave such a a world in their music, and so many heavy metal bands do, that I think, you know, that connection right there, for me at least, is one of those things and why they work so well, because, you know, artists are always looking about how they can uh, connect with different audiences and how they can make this whole big package. And I think that that's one of the ways to do it. Yeah, for sure. And it all ties in together. It's not only album covers. It's about, you know, band photos, the logo. I mean, Cradle of Filth are a great example of it. I mean, I remember the first time I saw Cradle of Filth album cover. I mean, I was hooked from the moment I saw the album cover, but also the logo and the band photos inside. Mm -hmm. Even the way they chose to to um, format the um, their lyrics and everything. Everything seemed to be, like, so mysterious. And then I saw... The video uh, from the cradle to enslave, I think it was, and mm. it was, you know, it creates this um, visual world. It, cre it creates this extra dimension that the music doesn't initially has. It expands the viewer's imagination, which is why I say that, I mean, album covers are as important as any other uh, visual element that you can throw in there, uh, because, I mean, it's not mandatory, but it it potentially can be crucial, you know? I mean, mm. uh, you can say how important is like a, a hat. And if it comes to Guns N' Roses, then it's important. How important is a logo? When it comes to the Misfits, then it makes a lot of sense and it is important. So each and every one of those avenues is 
basically an opening for uh, the musician to inject something else that amplifies and enhances the music, which is why they should be very careful with everything. I mean, even interviews. I mean, how many times have you read an interview with a band and they're only like, um, kind of turned off just because of this interview? So each and every one of them just ties in with the music as well. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's something that we talk about on this stream a lot and what uh, other people that I know, you know, work in the industry and stuff like that talk about. It's the whole package that you always have to think about, where, whether you're a new band or whether you're established, you always have to be thinking about that. But to your point, um, so I know I have these conversations a lot. And in fact, I was just uh, talking with someone uh, earlier this morning about this, about like you talk about how important the album art is and how crucial it is for bands either to get their idea, their sound or their story or the feeling of the album across i mean i know you have i know i have um but i'm curious of album arts that you have grabbed sight unseen right uh, uh like blind faith being like i have no idea what this band sounds like i think i have an idea what they sound like but i don't know because this is cool album art i'm gonna take this home and see what that does like what are what are some examples of that for you that you've seen or that you've experienced oh yeah i think my some of my first heavy metal albums that I myself purchased with my, you know, allowance as a teenager yeah. were basically based on the album covers because my dad got me into hard rock with uh, Deep Purple, uh, Pink Floyd and Scorpions. And I was, I was 13 and I was really deeply into Beavis and Butthead. And I remember th they <laughs> were major fans of, of Megadeth and Metallica and Iron Maiden. Yeah. And I have never heard anything by either of those bands but i remember on the um, on one of those deep purple cds that my dad gave me there was like a catalog at the end attached in the end uh, like a catalog from the record company and it had all these other album covers uh, in it and i remember seeing some iron maiden album covers in there and a Megadeth album cover as well and then i just saved up some money and went to uh, the record shop and I picked up a Megadeth album and I made an album and a, Meg and a Metallica album just based on the album covers Amazing. alone. Amazing. And to this day, th those are my favorite albums from each and every band. It was Euthanasia, A Master of Puppets and Killers. Those, I, it was strictly based on the album covers. Uh, that's, uh, that's actually an incredible story, I think, because... Um, like me personally, like my journey as a metal head uh, didn't start exactly that way, but it's amazing that that's like, and it's so prophetic, I think too, with where you've ended up now as well, is that you found your um, your favorite bands, your favorite record, just sight unseen by being like, this is cool shit. This artwork is cool. I'm going to grab that. Whereas like, you know, I found it through words of mouth and everything like that. And uh, there were a couple of records I can remember. Um, Testaments, The New Order, we'll be talking about Testament in a little bit, I imagine. Um, Winter Sun, their very first album. I had no idea what that uh, what that band sounded like, and I saw this like really weird snowy, you know, scene. Oh, yeah, and then that. at the and you know, hidden in this is like this corpse, like in the bottom that's like covered in snow and stuff like that. I don't even think I saw that until I brought the uh, brought the album home. There's just this dude, you know, in a snow pile with a town on the side. I was like, this is cool. I'm gonna grab this, and the the record was was really cool. Um, and I think there's like a little, like a hint of a sun in there as well. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never heard the band, but I remember the album cover. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. It's great because th those things stick in your mind. And I'm sure that everybody has their examples of, well, I don't know this band, but I've seen their album art or I've seen that because of um, how important it is. And I just want to shout out Beavis and Butthead as well, because they were the first time that I ever heard Pantera. Like that stuff that I don't think exists totally. around anymore, right? We're just like introducing this wave of like degenerate kids into this like amazing music by making fun of the music videos. I remember each and every word they said about Pantera. I think they thought that Phil Anselmo's name is Pantera. Yeah, like, God damn it, Pantera, go out and get the garbage. God damn it, Pantera. Exactly. Yeah. And even though they shat all over some of my favorite bands like King <laughs> Diamond and Death, they were, I mean, they were just a huge, huge influence. Because as a 13-year-old kid, I was like, I had... Uh, I mean, I wasn't really into hard rock beforehand, but I just, I just thought these guys were cool. So I need to check out whatever, whatever they are into. Actually, I think I bought the um, the soundtrack to. I 
it was the movie, I think. Back then, I mean, I can't remember which songs were in there. I think the Red or Chili Pepper song were. They were in there. there. Rob the Zombie, Rob I think, Zombie was one. in there. Yeah, because he had that uh, that vignette or whatever when they were, you know, tripping on peyote or mushrooms in, in the, the desert, desert or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so they were a huge influence, and basically, I mean, I mean, television and cartoons were a huge influence on everything I do uh, these days. And even when it comes to to music, my first um, my first encounter with horror was basically me uh, being like a five year old kid, maybe even I was four, and my dad showed me the Pink Floyd movie, The Wall. And there were parts of it, especially if you're considering it from the viewpoint of a kid, of a, like a five-year-old kid, they were horrific to me. The, I mean, the part where there are a bunch of kids on a conveyor belt being thrown away to, to a, like a meat grinder, mm. their face uh, disappears into the shadows and all you can see is like a faceless mask. And the animation parts were amazing. And this just solidified this connection I always had with between music and visuals uh that's an amazing segue because i actually really wanted to ask you about that um i, I read a couple of interviews saying that uh you know you were just like painting murals for friends in their bedrooms and that kind of started leading into yeah. different uh bands and people wanted to like commission your artwork and stuff like that but where was so like you've always been into painting and you got into uh rock and metal at a pretty early age 13 i, I would say is pretty early um yeah. When did you start to realize that those two things uh, could be in like an outlet for you and you can like marry those two things and work at these two passions that you had and take that and do your thing with it? To be honest with you, I'm not a very introspective kind of a person. Mm -hmm. And I've been just making pictures ever since I was a kid. So, I mean, I think part of being a, uh, any type of an artist, whether it's a musician or a visual artist or whatever, is uh, a little bit of not letting go of uh, this like childlike behavior of just, I, I wanna do the thing that I love doing and just the next day without even thinking about it, I'll just keep on doing the thing. And over the years, I mean, it just became this career out of nowhere because I've been doing the same thing ever since I was uh, like three years old or whatever. And I, I give tons of credit to just being very immature and juvenile, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah. Because I mean, I, I mean, because think about this tons of stories. When you start a business the first few years, you're not going to make any money. It's going to be rough. And if you're doing it in the field of art that's another obstacle to go over and if you're doing it in the field of art and um directing yourself into the heavy metal niche that's an obstacle to uh, to fight with so it was just stacked up against the um, against the mere thought of it becoming a career a stable sustainable career to raise a family on one day in the future and just luckily i never gave up because the thought never occurred to me even <laughs> it's just, yeah you know the days passed, the days just went by and it became its own thing uh i absolutely and love I that i mean a more logical person would have just uh, give up in the first few years for sure because it never felt i mean the first few years it didn't feel like it could be sustainable mm-hmm but you just did it because that you loved doing it and you had a passion about it and then eventually here you are yeah there's no way for me to do stuff that i don't like i mean i worked in advertising for one year and i hated it it was so weird yeah. and it was i felt so out of place i uh i did like um local campaigns for the likes of like toys r us and pizza hut and nissan and i used to uh, like sit in those board meetings and listen to um the marketing directors talk about stuff that i i, j I was just zoned out completely and i would come home late at night at like eight or nine and just do underground heavy metal flyers or logos or whatever i can build like websites and designed like my spaces for underground bands back then this is how i would spend my evenings 
Because, Amazing. I mean, my my passion was always uh, tied in with um, with music as well. Yeah, and I, I think that's a great lesson that a lot of people can take to heart, you know, just like plug away a little bit every day, just keep doing the thing, keep doing the thing, keep doing the thing, even when you want to give up and or don't think it's stupid or whatever it might be, just keep doing it. And then you do a little bit every day. And after a little while, all those little like bits of things that you did, you know, pile up and then get there. It's hard fucking work, man. But like yeah, you did right. it like and I, I think that's such uh, like something that a lot of people can take to heart if, you know, especially when, uh, you know, they get down on their art or their struggles of uh, creative, uh, creative expression and stuff like that. So um, I, I love hearing that, man. Yeah, but don't come to me if it doesn't work for you. Yeah, we're going to get a lot of angry letters over your way, Ella, and be like, well, I was trying to do it. No, um, I'm joking. Don't, but... don't listen to artists or musicians or whatever for advice on basically anything. Sure. I mean, take this as information, or as um, biographical information. Don't, don't try this at home. Sure. Um, but so I want to talk about uh, around where you're at about now, because, uh, you know, we mentioned the murderers row of bands uh, at the forefront of the conversation that you've worked for. Um, and now, that you know, this is a sustainable thing where you are a sought after artist to do stuff. I mean, you know, you just did the Halloween uh, art a little bit earlier. And I, I, I think I lost crowd count of how many credits you had this year. I think like seven or eight maybe of just of uh, stuff that has come out this year. I, I don't even know, man. Um, no but like, I'm curious, um, I've read a little bit kind of about how the process works and with some of the um, commissions that you've done, and it varies depending on the artist and what they want with the concept and things like that. Um, I'm curious on um, examples of work that the band has basically said, nope, you get freedom to do like whatever it is that you want, come back with us uh, for that. Um, and uh, I have a follow-up question with that as far as the concepts that bands have come up with that you've just like fallen in love with as well. Uh, the good ones. I mean, the, <laughs> usually the more, I mean, usually I'm left with uh, like an album title or um, a set of lyrics and maybe a general direction or a general concept but sometimes a band can come to you and they know exactly what they want and sometimes it's it's amazing and you don't have to do anything and in that case it's not about ego i don't care if uh, i'm not the guy who came up with this brilliant concept i truly want to be part of a great record with a great album cover yeah but in most but in most cases uh, i think my to be honest with you, my strong suit is not the technical aspect, but the more storytelling part of it. I mean, if I have to find something that is uh, that all my album covers have in common, you know, some of them are darker, some of them are more uh, figurative, some of them are more surreal, whatever. But if there's something that uh, truly uh, binds them all together is the element of storytelling. And I uh, begin basically the each and every process with just coming up with a story in my head and that drives basically everything that comes afterwards and the concept is just for me um, the most important part of it coming up with something is memorable something that I myself find uh, interesting that I would actually like to look at at the end and look at for the next few weeks that I'm painting it and something that I believe is also um, that also makes sense with the music, with the album mm. itself, and something that, as a fan of the band, I don't think about the other fans of the band. And luckily, I've been in a position where I can be picky about uh, the projects I take in. Mm. So I work with bands that I myself am a fan of. Mm -hmm. So I I can be like commercially appealing to the fan base without pandering, because I just try to uh, you know entertain myself and amuse myself. So um, yeah, and so most of the of them are are the ones that follow this uh, like not formula but workflow. Let's say mm. the Loud Blast album cover, uh, the Hangman one I did for the band the Artisan, the Psy album covers. Um, I think the last couple of the last three Testament album covers. Um, I mean most of them. I mean. Uh, you mentioned Halloween. Halloween had a very clear direction. They wanted mm -hmm. to have this character of the 
keeper of the seven keys in there. They wanted him to have wings uh, because he's like a fallen angel coming down to earth. But that's about it. Everything else I was able to um, sit a little bit with the lyrics and some of the demos on, oh, not the demos, I didn't get to listen to any, any of the demos back then, but just going through the lyrics and coming up with a composition that will strike the balance between something that's familiar and classic, but also uh, bring something new to the table, which is what I, I believe the band wanted to have in their music as well. Yeah, and I think it was also, like, I mean, Halloween is a, especially you, like, growing up in Germany and everything like that, like, Halloween is such a massive band uh, over there. I grew up in Israel. Oh, I, I, I I'm sorry. Here, uh, 10 years ago. I, I, I apologize. Uh, that's a uh, fault on mine. Um, but, you know, them being, like, German power metal and, like, the, having the such, uh, I mean, you mentioned Keeper of the Seven Keys about how iconic those albums are and getting to work on that and put your own spin on that to where they have it. I mean, uh, maybe it's not the same, right? But, like, there, I'm sure that there is a little bit of you that has to be like, okay, cool, I got to put my influence on this and put that in there just like, oh, maybe down the road you get to, you know, do some work on like an Iron Maiden album art or something like that. Like you're part of that discography now. Hopefully. I mean, that will be, that, that's the dream gig for basically everybody, everyone who's doing this uh, right. profession, for sure. Um, so so you mentioned... Aware, though. Uh, I, I'm going to bring it up. You mentioned um, that Psy album cover. Um, I know I've read that this is one of your favorite pieces that you've done, and I've got it up uh, for the viewers in the chat to see right now. Um, but this kind of goes back to what we were talking about, that Winter Sun album, right, with all the subtlety in that, where you notice things uh, after like looking at it for a little bit. Um, and I, I listened to this album earlier this week as I was kind of prepping with everything. And I, did, I spent probably half of it just staring at this thing because all of the different things on there. Can you, like, I guess just take us through how the original concept was and how you started layering in all these different kind of grotesque and creepy things throughout this entire thing? Yeah, thank you for the kind words. Uh, it was basically um, Mirai, who was the, the lead composer of the band, mm. told me that he's writing um, an album about nightmares. And that's about it. That's all the direction I had. Wow. And I think I was, I was in the shower when I thought about the idea of having uh, my grandmother as, um, as a queen going through the marketplace I mean, uh, with a pregnant belly, uh, pushing a barrel full of dead babies. Seriously, that, that was so long ago that I can't even remember. I think it was just, I mean, one thing uh, just makes you think, so, I mean, in, in a very associative way, makes you come up with, the, with uh, each and every one of the other elements in it. Because you start off with the idea of, okay, what what's going to be, because there's, when you think about nightmares, there's this like very weird kind of uh, creepy feeling uh, when you're having a bad dream, which is like everything is close to being normal, but something is off. Mm -hmm. So I started off with something that felt like off my grandmother in that, just this weird costume. And then I just went further from that point on. Okay, what's going to be more off and creepier? And at a certain point, it, I mean, once I got to the dead babies, I was like, all right, you can't go even more grotesque than that. So in order to complement it and, and have some contrast, I added like these bananas and, you know, all, I mean, tons of uh, fruit stands and people are smiling at her. People are greeting her with like uh, with kind, smiley faces and that that's just because you couldn't get like more grotesque than that baby so you need to inject some absurdity into it because that's another avenue that you can go uh, and amplify as i said amplify the entire experience and atmosphere yeah uh i i that's uh absolutely uh amazing i think and like one of the things that caught me too the the cat at the very bottom of everything, like like licking the blood off of everything. Uh, just another That's one. That's my of the... wife's idea. 
that one is what my wife's idea. Amazing. So pleased to hear that because you pick, you singled out this one, and that was her idea. Amazing. Uh, yeah. Well, all the credit goes uh, to Mrs. Cantor then. Um, yeah. Sure. But yeah, but like that's the thing, right? Crap, and then the crap artwork, otherwise. <laughs> I don't know if I would say that uh, because it's got everything else there in that. But I no, I just I, I think that that's one of those things that I really dig. I mean, think about I mean, you mentioned uh, Iron Maiden Killers, right? I mean, Iron Maiden's my favorite band, right? Think about how much time we've probably spent trolling through uh, the Somewhere in Time album cover, both front and back, or like the Power Slave album cover, right? All these little things in these that catch your eye that when you have this physical vinyl copy, like, big in your face that you can look at it and spend time and really weaves and goes with everything that's in there and i mean <laughs> that that psy album do definitely does sound like a nightmare at times like that is a band that is just so unique um and so interesting and i, I know you've done a couple of uh, their album covers I love now band, yeah. yeah and they're, they're I just love, love they're great and the thing is with iron maiden is that all of those highly detailed album covers i mean um Power Slave is a good example because uh, I I try not to cram as much uh, information as and details as possible just for the sake of it. Sure. But on the Psy album cover, I mean, uh, this was the second record I did with them in Somniphobia. I wanted to have so many details because it contri each and every one of them contributes to how to the kind of feeling that I wanted to have. The next album cover we did together was very minimalistic in comparison, but it also had a few elements in the background that um, drive the storytelling element of it. And with Iron Maiden, I mean, this is why I prefer, I think, uh, I mean, it, yeah, it's fun to have the, the gatefold of somewhere in time and go and try to pick each and every one of those tiny elements. But Power Slave is one record that I always try to um to see like a, as a study case uh when it comes to okay this is an iconic iron maiden album cover but only like five percent of it is an it has anything to do with iron maiden sure which is amazing because when you think about the real estate of the um, of the cover it's like 95 percent of it doesn't look at all like an iron maiden album cover it just goes to show that if you keep if you single out the most iconic element of it and you single out the focal point and the thing that makes it connect with the music and the fans and uh, the already established visual vocabulary of the band, you can go crazy with everything else around it. You can take it to Egypt. You can just build an entire crazy scenery about it and be creative which is what I usually do when I get to work with bands that uh, that have like classic album covers, bands that already have uh, a very like legendary discography. Mm. I just try to say, to look at it, it's like, all right, what is like the very basic thing that I know that if I have that as like the basis of the composition, I can go crazy with and go uh, like totally creative with everything else and still keep the vibe of the band and still connect with the music but offer something new which is what each and every band want to do at the end of the day they still want to sound like themselves but present new and fresh ideas um yeah, and this, so that actually uh, spawns a question because uh, that makes me think of Testament, and I want to ask about them here in a second. Yeah. But behind you, you have the cover to Jotun's uh, Access All Worlds, right? That is a little yeah. bit on the other side, uh, where this is a band with their, I believe it was their debut album that's come out. They don't have any, like, legacy or anything like no. that. So how do you approach... They had an, an EP before. They, they had an EP? Had okay. EP. Um, I haven't heard it. I, I've heard the album. I think the album's uh, fantastic. Uh, I, I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. So, like, uh, before we get into Testament and talking about, like, a band with, uh, uh, no pun intended, but a legacy with them, um, where where do you stand with uh, when you're almost creating the intro to, like, the first thing that a lot of people are going to be seeing from this band? Because, again, the, you know, the uh, artwork for Jotun, first first intro to that band that i that i ever had right before i even hit play yeah uh i mean when i take on uh let's think about i mean uh, with that specific band they really knew in advance what 
they will see on the album cover. So I only had to contribute the composition and the color choices, etc. But le let's speak a band like Alkspire. Um, mm. If you if you look, I mean, this is a relatively like modern, newish band. So I was able to create like this visual language that wasn't there before and establish a certain aesthetic, uh, which is uh, basically have like a close up of this sci-fi type of a creature that we've carried on through the last uh, two records. And I I'm not much of a guy who uh, his strong suit is creating um, like character designs. Mm -hmm. But uh, bo I mean, both of them, if you just look at the character itself, it's something uh, quite, I mean, quite standard, but the way it interacts with its scenery and the way uh, the, um, the story flows is, is different and set them apart, I think. I'm trying to think about other bands that I did this with, but uh, I mean, Alkspire is a recent example of it, so the, and that's an easy one to choose. Yeah, and I have the uh, um, artwork for Bleed the Future up right now, um, which is coming out on October 29th so that the chat viewers can see. And, you know, again, mm -hmm. that's another one of those ones, like, I didn't notice the hand that was coming out there out of that, like, almost liquid gold. And I, I can't zoom in on it right now, but it looks like they're almost like people dancing or, like, twisting in the wind or something on it. Um, and so I think mm -hmm. that speaks to the points that you're talking about. Like, it is, um, I, I guess I hesitate to use the word, but, you know, a little bit more simplistic than say like that first Psy album that we were talking about. Um, but then there's still details and intricacies in all those as well. Yeah, and I think Venom Prison is another uh, exa good example because Great I band. joined, I, I started working with them before their debut album. They, on, they had like two demos out. Uh, so then I was able to basically come up with something that we will care, a uh, certain aesthetic that we will carry on from each album to the next. And I think we've established uh, this visual language that has, it's kind of a combination of surrealism and fantasy, but uh, just from a different angle. I mean, one of the things I try to keep intact is having like a central uh, element of uh, a lead female role. Mm -hmm. Because the, most of the lyrics are very personal, mm -hmm. stuff that uh, Larissa wrote from her own experience. And the more interesting uh, stories in her lyrics tend to be the ones that ha have to do with, uh, with fe the female perspective. Stuff like, uh, what was it? Um, Revenge on a Rapist on the first album. And the second one had... Uh, lyrics that had to do with um, the industrialization of um, surrogate pregnancies. Mm -hmm. Song is so, brutal. So these, I mean, songs call for a story that is told from a female perspective. So this is why I carried it on uh, through all of those records. And the next one is no exception. We finished that about a few months ago, and it's going to uh, push more in that direction of uh, evolving specific uh, aesthetic. Uh, I love to hear that. Fantastic. I know that they've been in the studio. They signed a Century Media as well, which I'm ridiculously stoked yeah. for. Like, is they, I, I think that they are a, a fantastic band uh, that I want people to hear about. And yeah, I, I just showed the uh, the two album covers uh, from uh, uh, Animus and Samsara. And yeah, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see where that goes. I will hold off on asking questions about that. I'm sure you're, there are some mums and everything like that, and I'm not going to get you to spill the beans on when the album's coming out. Um, but that is, that's exciting to hear um and I, I i think that that's uh that's really interesting um and uh love that i, I know uh, I, I saw that that interview as well where uh, larissa was saying like they had a concept that they came to mind and you you know you working with them i think is really really fucking cool um so yeah, before a great band for sure before we get into uh, the little game that I have prepared uh, to test your uh, visual memory, sir, uh, oh. I do I do want to know, uh, uh, you know, I love Testament. 
Uh, you love Testament. A lot of people love Testament. They're an amazing band. Sure. Um, you, uh, I think, have been working with them since uh, Formation of Damnation, uh, if I'm uh, not uh, mistaken. And I... Uh, watched another interview with our friend squatter over at bloodstock when you were there and you had your uh your, your gallery and exhibit over there talking about how the squatter for sure yeah dude uh, shout out to bloodstock let's get a link to them in the chat friends of ours over here um uh you mentioned that they had the album artwork up when you were or when they were like writing the music and everything like that. A, I want to know what that's like ha hearing that a band with a, such a legacy, again, nope, that time they're definitely a pun intended, um, as Testament, uh, you know, composing their songs based on what you've done. Um, and has that ever happened with any other bands to your knowledge? Um, I don't think so because only with Testament we start off so early with the artwork that uh, it predates any lyrics and even the album title. Uh, last album, Titans of Creation, was uh, uh, the title uh, was based on the artwork. The artwork was there before the title, before any lyrics were, were done. And wow. Dark Roots of Earth as well. We finished it so early that even the music wasn't, I mean, maybe it was half written or some of the songs were written afterwards. Yeah, they printed it out hung it in the rehearsal room and just thought to themselves, I mean, this is what, what they told me. How is it going to sound? I mean, an album that looks like this, how it's going to sound like, which is amazing because, I mean, uh, I'm a huge music nerd. I'm a huge music fan. And this is, my, I mean, if I can influence the music in any way, uh, that's, that's incredible for me. That's an incredible feeling. Uh, the best feeling you can have is that at the end you'll be proud of the album cover, but then you'll also have a record that you yourself li uh, would like to listen to just for fun, which is amazing just to be part of it, for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, 100%. Uh, and uh, I think, what was the first single for the Dark Roots of the Earth? I can't remember if it was Native Blood or uh, uh, True. Blood. Yeah, uh, that sounds like that album artwork looks. I mean, so like, there you go, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that, that was a great record to do, and it was, we had so much time because they kept on uh, getting like those tour offers, so they started recording, and then they went out on tour, continued recording, and then went out on tour, so we had so much time to do this one, I think it was, uh, again, it was a very like fine balance between creating something that's uh, very traditional, Mm -hmm. but also um, offering something fresh. And I think this specific album cover, it was funny because I took this album cover to an exhibition I had in, um, I was invited to have an exhibition in a movie festival in Romania. And up until that point, I was sure that this is what was my, like, uh, my most popular album cover, the, like the favorite album. And nobody gave a shit about this specific one, which <laughs> goes to shows that, I mean, it, it just looks like a classic heavy metal album cover. I think it could be a Bathory album cover, a dissection album cover. It could be a Blind Guardian album cover. I think it, with this one, we just tapped into something that's like very quintessentially metal. And I think it spoke to tons of fans because of it. But it's yeah. amazing to see how outside of metal it has like a totally different appeal. Really? Yeah, for sure. It was, I mean, everybody was um, way more interested in the more um, figurative stuff, the more surreal stuff. And I think it just looked like straight up standard fantasy to them, which is which is amazing to see how, how it changes depending on... Um, on the audience that you have. Yeah, that is fascinating. Um, and I wonder if that's something that we could uh, try and experiment with in the future. Like here's a roving carnival of heavy metal artwork that we're showing to all the people who listen to country and like R&B and stuff like that. I don't know, see how they have to, uh, what they have to think about it. We're all weirdos over here. So we kind of get like in our in our own little world sometimes, I think. Yeah, I, I was asked uh, recently about uh, what has been my audience lately and ever since I joined 
Instagram a few years ago, I noticed that it shifted away a little bit, from, uh, like simply just having strictly heavy metal uh, audience to just fans of art in general. And some mm -hmm. of them are like fans of just the fantasy stuff or more the surrealistic stuff or maybe the figurative or even I had a couple of uh, erotic art pieces as well. So mm. those just attracted a completely different audience, which is, it's, it's, it's interesting to see. And sometimes I feel like a lot of them are turned off when I, uh, I mean, some of them followed me in order to see more of that uh, fantasy erotic art that piece that I did and afterwards maybe they were just horrified when I started posting more of like, <laughs> the darker stuff that I usually come up with. Uh, yeah, they see that Loud Blast cover and they're like, yep, nope, sorry, checking out here, goodbye. Yeah, that's my favorite one because I think this is, that's the one piece where I felt like the storytelling came out exactly as I wanted it to be. And because it's like so storytelling based, it's so important to me to be able to feel like the story came across and people are just not looking at it going, hmm? What's going on? Yeah, no, uh, I have it up uh, for the uh, chat to see right now. I mean, that the the red of the devil is striking compared to everything else. And because of that, you get lost in the fact that he's slitting his own throat to get, like, the milk out to everybody. Like, again, that subtlety in there where just, like, there are layers that are almost like your eyes tumbling down the stairs as it sees new stuff. So I, I see why you have that one um, in your own personal, like, high regard over there. Yeah, I think I'm more drawn to uh, ab absurdities and like weird ways to die or inflict pain or or whatever. I mean, uh, if I'm left alone to come up with a concept, it usually goes in that direction, something a little bit more dark and, and creepy, I guess. Which is why album covers like the Halloween stuff is, I mean, those straight up fantasy covers are so hard for me to do <laughs> because, because, because I mean, every dragon has been painted from a million different uh, angles already. Mm -hmm. Those stories have been told so many times before that it's so hard to come up with something and at the end of the day feel like, all right, I think I contributed something uh, a little bit original while still traditional yeah uh i understand that a hundred percent but it looks like you are making your way and doing it as best you can my friend at, at what at, you're, you're 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 sorry you're making your way through and doing it as best you can my friend oh, thank you Hope um so. So uh, before we get into uh, the little game I have, the last question I have for you are like, we've been spending a lot of time talking about your work and what it means to you and all that other stuff. I'm curious, uh, other artists that you think are, uh, whether they're album artists or whether they're just like other artists, animators, anything like that, that are really speaking to you right now that you think are doing uh, fantastic work throughout the landscape. I guess it doesn't have to be metal, but you know, other metal artwork uh, or artists or anything like that, graphic novel artists, things like that, people that speak to you. Actually, this has been a plan of mine for like uh, a week now. Uh, I'm going to hit like 50,000 uh, subscribers on Instagram soon. And I thought about saying like uh, this like, cl cliche thank you post. And I said, all right, I mean, maybe take this opportunity and sh shed some focus on the stuff that I would like uh, people to be aware of because I've been following tons of these modern 3D animators that I think are completely like cutting edge and amazing and should get tons of um, eyes and exposure to them. And some of those are just so influential on me as well. But I, I, I can't remember the names. There, there are just tons of them. So I'm just compiling a list this week and I'm going to post it on Instagram. Just uh, a gallery of works of my favorite contemporary artists that I think everybody should at the very least check out because there's some amazing stuff going, especially in the field of uh, 3D, modern 3D animation, some very weird, expressive, creative stuff. So I'm just uh, going to use this like 
um, cliche vanity post. Okay. Yeah. Thank you everybody for following. Just check out these guys because these guys deserve your follow as well. I think more. that's I think that's a fantastic idea, my friend. Uh, so get we will ha we'll post a link to your Instagram and your socials uh, in the chat so people can follow you if they're that's not right. doing so already, um, and then they can uh, get that signal boost of those different artists. Because yeah, I mean, I always think that that's great. Uh, we we talk a lot about one of the other shows that I do about um, artists collaborating with uh, up and coming artists, right? Or established ones going and like boosting up everybody because they don't have to do that. But it's always great when artists, regardless of whether they're musicians painters, animators, whatever, um, do that. So we will make sure that we can get those uh, those artists and animators seen. Because, uh, yeah, they're a, the amount of artists that I've done and seen through the research that I've been doing for this interview, just I wouldn't be able to name half of them anyway if I didn't have them right down in front of me. So I understand. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of them just don't use the, the real name, just write some made up something for social media. And I'm like, I can't remember. <laughs> There you go. So I think one of them is called like 3D Cool World or something. Just, just weird stuff. I can't so, remember. But so, something I'll, hard I'll to Google, probably. Soon, for sure. Yeah. 